Welcome back to the Mm-hmm podcast, and this is Mm-hmm. This is part two with Parker Seahusen from Iowa, because we're we're bored and we got nothing else to do, so we're like, let's do another one. Yeah. So today we yeah. today we're gonna talk about uh, alternate energy solutions. Alternative. Alternative. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Energy solutions, so like electrical vehicles, solar panels, wind turbines that you see is getting put in the air everywhere, and even uh, nuclear dams, pa- like uh, water dams, nuclear power plants, oh. <laughs> um, multiple other things. So, uh, Carter, let's first get your opinion on uh, electrical vehicles. Uh, well, Me? no, Carter. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I just heard the er. <laughs> That's so, okay. electrical vehicles, I think some of them make sense, especially for an urban citizen. But as you know, like us three here, we don't really live super close to any large cities. So, we have a lot, there's more distance mm-hmm. between us and our places that we need to get to. So, I would say that it makes kind of sense for an urban person to get one. Because they would also have access to the charging ports. But, like, if I was to get that as, like, my first vehicle, I don't think it'd be a good financial investment for me. Yeah. But if you had the opportunity... like... Yes. But if you had, like, the opportunity to, like, drive one, would you drive one? I I mean, yeah, I'd want to see what it's like. Yeah. I mean... I wouldn't want to own it, though. That's, That's where I... That's the difference there. Yeah. Uh, it's like a swimming pool. It's fun to play in, but you don't really want to own it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Parker, what's your opinion exactly. on elect- electric vehicles? Um, I think they're cool just because they're so much um, more advanced in technology. So they like have all the GPS built in and like the big TV thing on the front. Like I'm, I'm thinking of Tesla, right? Yeah. Um, but. My dad knows someone who bought a Tesla because he's like a manager of some electric thing. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, he has a Tesla and he said that to get a full charge was almost a thousand dollars in Whoa. just one charge. And so, yeah, that's, I probably, yeah, I wouldn't buy one just cause it's super expensive. Then again, gas is also going up. So, it just, might not be too long before it's $1,000 for a regular gas fill-up. See, where I, I land where I land on this is, like, half and half, like, hybrid, you know? Yeah. It's like, you have a little bit of gas, a little bit of electric, like, a Prius. That's what I have. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, those hybrids, they get some crazy gas mileage. Yeah. We can get like sixty if the wind's in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like some of the people, like yeah, you gotta pay to charge your vehicles, and a lot of people like pay to have like ten, twelve thousand dollars to have a charger installed at their house. Yeah. Plus, it's uh, it depends on if you have different packages. If you have the fast charger or the slow charger, it takes seven yeah. to ten hours to charge a vehicle. I mean, now Ford and uh, GMC and Chevy have all came out with all electric trucks now. And the problem is, is, yeah. is the range on them. Some of the ranges on them are like three, 400 miles. So in that three to 400 mile span, you're going to have to find pinpoint a charger to plug it in. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I would, you know, I would drive a hybrid. But a full electric vehicle, I would drive if I was in urban areas. But I would prefer to. Yes. Dri- I would j- just prefer to drive a uh, combustible vehicle. That and, sounds super dangerous the way you said it, but yes. <laughs> well, a fuel, a vehicle and, that yeah. a vehicle that burns fuel, basically. The ones that can combust. I wouldn't want to drive a combustible vehicle. <laughs> But yeah, so basically what has happened in the past about year or so is we've had all these companies come out with electric vehicles because gas prices was at 
five dollars for gas, six dollar, almost over yeah. six dollars for diesel, and so yeah. a bunch of uh, uh, the government started saying that you need to start releasing electric vehicles. So a bunch of companies started doing that in the past few years. So we have electric Hummers, electric trucks, electric cars. We even got electric semis now. Tesla's came out with, yeah. and. Uh, and so everything is a lot of people are switching to them, but then a lot of people are starting to get rid of them because they're cost. Because I saw one thing where in Florida, when they had that hurricane go through, all those electric Teslas down there, they uh, yeah. were full of water because they were flooded. And then when they went to run them, they just caught on fire. So, I mean. And they're trying to put out, you get tax credits if you have an electrical vehicle, but it's not really that much. And yeah, people just prefer to drive fuel vehicles instead of electrical. Yeah, also there's um, the reason that Teslas like to charge, to get a full charge is because electricity is expensive. So if we had a clean, renewable energy source like nuclear energy that was actually safe, for like, well, not like actually safe. It is fairly safe, but a completely one hundred percent trustworthy energy source. Yeah, I, I would totally do an electric car. That would just make so much sense. Well, you got to think too. They're they are getting all this. They got to get all the materials for the batteries, lithium, yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. That's that's big money. If yeah. once that runs out, your electrical yeah. vehicles are done. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. like the cost. When your battery like dies and you have to buy a whole new one, which I mean, like something could go out on a gas vehicle, but just like the batteries are super expensive. Yeah. Yes. Um. I mean, yeah, like you just see how how many how much how many batteries are put into those things, and then some of those vehicles weigh a lot. Then they weigh a yeah. lot more. That's true. Yeah. And uh, over time, electrical electrical vehicles last like an average five to ten years because over time their batteries start getting weak every time you plug them in. And yeah. also in cold areas too, they'll uh, really degrade the batteries down. So uh, yeah, that's. I mean. I see a bunch of people, I've seen a lot more people driving around electric vehicles because they yeah. just, they're, they're just the hot thing now to drive well, yeah, around. Yeah. Like more available. Yeah. Like every car company yeah. Yeah. has one or two of models that they've made electric. And also the new thing is too, a lot of vehicles have the new like auto start stop on them. You yeah. can't find a vehicle that doesn't have just continuous engine running now. All the new ones, yeah. they stop. If they stop running when you're at like a stoplight or a stop sign and stuff, or in yeah. traffic. So, also another uh, energy source that we a lot of people are starting to use is solar panels. And oh, yeah. uh, I mean, our school has installed solar panels, and also uh, a lot of homes are using solar panels. They're they're really expensive to buy. But then you don't have to worry about paying the monthly cost for your power to be running, and you don't have to yeah. worry about worry about uh, your power getting knocked out. Um, plus, you got to spend a lot of money getting the batteries to store your power, and yeah. plus, too, you also got to worry about if you're going to have enough sun. If you're in a sunny yeah. environment, you got to worry about if you're in a uh, area where you'll get a lot of sun. And also, well, I guess you said you don't have to worry about it getting knocked out, but I mean, you have to definitely be concerned with like upkeep of them. You can't yeah. let like well, trees be growing around them. I'm, and, I'm saying like if you if you didn't have solar panels and you had power lines running from a power company, that could have the chance of getting knocked out. But then yeah, also that goes with solar panels too. Yeah, if a you, tree could fall on it. Yeah, if you don't have a proper area and you got to maintain them too clean the snow off yeah. stuff like that so what are your opinion on solar panels carter oh me again yeah we're just gonna go down the line again oh okay 
Uh, I definitely think, like, if you have, like, maybe a smaller house, like, I think maybe in, like, an urban area, if you live in, like, a smaller house, maybe, you could throw those on, like, your roof, and that could help out a little bit, but then again, just, like, you have to worry about Mother Nature, especially, I think, hail could be, like, a, I mean, it doesn't happen a lot, like, bad enough hail, I mean, it could definitely still happen. It depends on the area, too. That's Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, like, it was kind of like the electric cars. It kind of depends on where you live on if it's useful yeah. for you, which I think kind of goes the same with the solar panels. Yes. Like if you live in an area where you can get them and like, and it's easy, I don't know how to like say this, but like if you live in an area where they're readily available, like you can have someone come out and install them and it's not for too big of a fee. And I mean, if, if you're interested, I think it's an honest uh, investment. Yeah. All right, Parker, go ahead. What's your opinion on it? Um, it's a really, really good idea on paper, but I, I'm not saying that they're not bad. I They're a really good idea, and they could really help turn the energy thing around. But, well, you have to yeah, take in the cost, take in clear all the stuff off all the things that could happen to it they don't seem too like sturdy you know but they are well yeah because just one cloudy day or like a cloudy week and what happens you know yeah you you just don't you don't you just don't have enough power stored up for the next few days you just if you have a week where it's like just rain and snow then yeah. you then you got to use up all your stored battery, but then eventually that's going to run out. So yeah. So what I think would be the best option is like a big, huge, not like huge, but like for every like say county, there's a big one. There's like a big so I don't know what a bunch of them is called. The big solar panel plants and a bunch of windmills and stuff solar farms yeah like a solar farm windmill farm whatever you call them i don't know if they're a farm or not yeah Um, but have the government do that for like bits and pieces of the counties or whatever and have the government responsible for upkeep and all that stuff or like the electric company just have someone be responsible for the solar energy of like a county. I yeah, think that just sense. Go a long think way. It, like yeah, federally run or like yeah. state ran. This almost sounds like communism, but not quite. <laughs> well, a lot of the a lot of the solar farms that are getting installed around here are companies coming in and installing them, and then that company is going to maintain them over yeah. time by killing the grass that grows up around them, killing the trees. But then yeah. the local power companies around here, which is NIPSCO and RMC, are going to get the power from those solar panels. So it's kind of a half-half thing. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I mean, a lot of power can get uh, sent out from the solar panels. I know one area is getting, can power like, over a thousand homes yeah. in like uh, uh, quite a few days. I really like that. Yeah. That idea of like kind of like each like County or just area and they have like one big center for everyone. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. Cause and it I just, uh, what I Go guess ahead. it makes sense that like, then it's not like each person having to deal with it on their own. It's just like one area that they have to worry about upkeep and management for. Yeah. And I'm just talking about like as far as private use of solar panels because all that money, all that upkeep is a lot of work for just one person to do to power their own home. So, yeah, just like I'm, I'm j- this is just me talking. I would just say forget about buying your own. Just find out about if there's one near you that you can like help. Like even just like to give donations to or pay a little bit of money to. Think, yeah, be like a part of your taxes go to like yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, I was also and thinking. Like, I was also thinking too, like, you know, all these solar panels are getting installed, but then what's how long are they going to last? Five, yeah. ten years, thirty years? Yeah. It all depends. Yeah. And you have to take them all down and put them up again. Well, yeah. it's going to be more of the battery storage is going to need to be replaced first, probably. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we got one, one uh, solar farm over here getting built. We got one getting built just south of us here. We got one that's probably going to get built up north here that's going to be over 13,000 acres. It's going to be huge. It's going to be like the biggest one in the world, I think. Wow. Um, Do they have any out there in Iowa, like near you? Um, I think there are a few, like, um, hog confinements that have them, like, I don't know, maybe, like, I don't know how much it is, but there's, like, maybe, like, a hundred six-foot-by-six-foot solar panels that are powering this hog farm, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm right about that, but mostly we just have, I don't even actually know where our power companies get the electricity from, so... Uh, and that also ties into uh, wind turbines. You know, a bunch of wind turbines yeah. are getting built now, and that's that. A lot of people. The problem is, is some people are disagreeing with solar panels and wind turbines because they're taking up agricultural lands. Wait, hold up. All right. I, I mean, I'll let you finish, but I just want to say, like, on the solar panels, like you take like a big pasture, like a pasture animal, like goats. All right. They eat like a bunch of grass and they just kind of graze all day. You got your solar farm out there and you're like worried about upkeep with like weeds and stuff. You just throw like a big herd of goats out there <laughs> and you just make that sure is. the solar panels are tall enough that they're not going to like be able to jump on them. And I think yeah, there that. you go. There you go. But yeah, that kind of like, a bunch of people are disagreeing with the solar panels and wind turbines because it's taking over agricultural lands. But some people are kind of liking it, especially the wind turbines, because they don't take up as much land and they're not fenced in. You can farm around them. But also, yeah. too, some people like them because if you get them put on your property, you get paid a monthly income from being there. Yeah. And uh, you... Uh, I mean, I know a lot of people who have wind turbines down south here of us, and, uh, I mean, they don't really mind them because they can just farm around them. And also, yeah. and a lot of people think that the these big group of wind turbines is causing weather changes in that area. I don't really think that's happening. I think maybe we do get a little less rain, maybe a little less snow. But I don't think it's caused major issues in our area. So, Carter, what are your opinions on uh, wind turbines? I think compared to solar panels, they make, like, a little bit more sense, especially for, like, big open areas. Because, like, I know here where we live, like, we just get, like, wind, like, every day. It is always wind blowing. So I feel like it's definitely more of a constant than sun. Because, like, I mean, literally for the last five days, there's been, like, no sun here. So, like, if we would have solar panels, we'd be kind of in bad shape. But it's been windy <laughs> every day here. So if we had had yeah. a wind turbine, we'd actually be doing all right. And, yeah, like you said, they don't, um, since they're taller, not wider, like solar panels, it's still farmable. You can, like, throw a few out in your yeah. field, and they're pretty easy to just, you know, go around. Unlike solar panels, where they kind of just like now that ground is, you can't use it for anything now. Yeah, um, I don't really know like if wind turbines are like the cost for what you get out of them. I don't know what that really is though. The average cost for a wind turbine is over a million dollars. What to to uh, build one? To install, to install one. Oh. But, uh, cause that's what the companies are spending to get that all shipped in to build it. Oh, well, yeah. And you I'm gotta sure. think, and you gotta think too, you gotta maintain it over time because you gotta go up and 
because there's a engine up at the top. You got to maintain the engine. You got to maintain the, make sure everything is up to, up to date on everything. And so, yeah. All right, Parker, what are your opinions on uh, wind turbines? So, um, we live smack dab in the middle of a wind turbine farm. Um, our, one of the wind turbine driveways literally goes right past our house. So, yeah, I have, we have a lot of them around here. Um, as far as maintenance goes, I don't really see a lot of, like, heavy maintenance. I see, like, a guy come out and maybe, like, go up and fix something. But other than that, they seem pretty low maintenance. A few years ago, they had a big project all over the county where they, like, made the blades longer and, like, made it a little taller. But that and that was a little annoying because it had, like, big cranes driving all over the place. Yeah. But, um, and as far as the farmland aspect of it, my dad, I think he, he said this, I'm pretty sure, um, the windmill driveways have been so helpful because you can get almost to the middle of the field with, like, a semi-truck, and you don't have to drive through the mud and everything. And also, yeah, we get, like, rent money or something for having them on there. Yeah. So they are pretty pretty steep in price to put them up, but and I I'm not sure how much energy they actually produce like a week or whatever. Suppose but, supposedly one turn can power like I think like a hundred to two hundred homes a day. Wow. Whoa. So yeah, that that's pretty good. For a million dollars and as much upkeep as it takes, I think that's that's pretty good. Yeah. And for, like, yeah, the land is still usable. Like, uh, yeah. So you can still make money off the land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I know, like, I know also, too, when it, like, gets really windy, then they have to shut them off. Yeah. Because otherwise it'll be too much wind. And, uh, I mean... A lot of people also talk about, like, the noise from them. They don't like the noise, which I haven't really been around them, but I've been right beside one one time, and it does make, like, a clink noise while they go. I don't yeah. know if you ever hear any noises from them or not. Yeah, there is, like, it sounds a little like the wind, but it's a little more up and down. So instead of just, like, a steady blowing, it's like a... It sounds like a giant blade turning in the wind, which is exactly what you should expect. Yeah. Um, but there is occasionally like a little bit of like, if it's really, really, really quiet and really still, there's still a little bit of wind up in the, like, wherever that is. So the windmills are always turning at least a little bit. Yeah. And you can occasionally hear like a little motor noise as they like turn the top of the windmill to get the best wind. Yeah. But other than that, there, I've literally lived on the same plot of land my whole life and it's just kind of is the background yeah so yeah i mean we'll never you know these alternative ener alternative energies are just starting to come out and we'll we'll have to find out and see how long they last so either five ten fifteen maybe thirty years i don't know we'll never know well we will we'll eventually find out but they're just yep. starting out, so it's kind of that experimental period right now. Yep. So, uh, well, thanks for coming to our podcast again, Parker. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, and talking about, actually talking about something this time and not just <laughs> talking about random stuff. What about our sponsor, Todd? Uh, our sponsor is Alternative Energy Solutions where you can buy solar panels for a deep discount. Oh. That's our sponsor oh. for today. Oh. Seems like we might have bias if they're our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, so have a great day, everyone. Subscribe, subscribe to Parker. I'll put his link in the description to his channel, and uh, have a great day.